Now let's continue with this crusade against these worthless mutts and their troubled owners. Let's debunk yet another dog loving talking point. We hear it all the time. Dogs attack because of poor training. If the dog is raised properly and not abused, it will not attack. The reputation of dog lover dishonesty continues. I do not accept any behavior from animals that I would not accept from humans. For example, I don't care what type of instinct causes a dog to attack me. I won't tolerate being attacked by a dog any more than I would a human. The result is the same. When the attack is over, you have a bloodied, injured human, no matter if the perpetrator was human or dog. My intolerance of dog behavior is better understood when you imagine a human doing the same thing that a dog does. Now just imagine you went to an adoption agency and adopted a human. And let's say this human was very hairy, right? Dogs don't look like humans. So let's say that this human looked a little different from most other humans. And let's say every time this adopted human had a headache, it would attack people. He would just jump up and start punching you in the face. Would you keep that human in your home? Anytime this hairy adopted human felt physical pain or illness, it became aggressive and attacked people. Would you want that human in your home? Yet, that is exactly what dogs do. No matter how well trained they are, if a dog is in pain or is not feeling well, it will become aggressive and attack people. And these dog lovers project this behavior as if it's supposed to be acceptable. When I'm in pain for whatever reason, I don't go around punching people. I would deserve to be placed in a stray jacket or detained by authorities for such behavior. Yet we're supposed to accept this behavior from dogs. I don't think so. Now just imagine this hairy adopted human is home alone late at night, right? He's watching television or something. You walk through the door and startle him. He responds to being startled by attacking you, punching you square in the face three or four times. Is this acceptable? Yet, dogs will attack humans in response to fear, no matter how well trained they are. Now just imagine this hairy person wanted to beat up somebody down the street but was unable to right it had a confrontation with somebody down the block but can't get to that person so instead because it can't get to that person and can't it decides or he decides to beat you up and attacks you would that be acceptable Yet, dogs have what's called redirected aggression. When a dog cannot attack an intended target, person or animal, and redirects his or her aggression toward another target. This hairy man sitting at home all day thinking about this person down the street that he's unable to beat up. You walk in the home and he starts punching you in the face. Is that acceptable? That human would come across as an extreme safety hazard. We're supposed to accept this type of behavior from dogs. Now just imagine this hairy man would attack your family members or your friends who came over as company. 
This is exactly what dogs do. It's called territorial aggression, where dogs feel they have to protect a certain territory. Or protective aggression, where a dog guards his or her owner from another person who may not pose an actual threat. Just imagine this hairy man is eating a plate of food that you made and that you gave him. And as you happen to walk near him, he would attack you. This is called food aggression in dogs. No matter how well trained, dogs often display food aggression and humans and children end up being attacked. Many of these kids who get attacked mistakenly got too close to a mutt while it was eaten. I've quoted the veterinarian several times in my videos who really helped produce one of the best articles I've seen. Who said no matter how well trained, dogs will always revert to their natural instincts. I will keep that confession from that veterinarian in the face of these mutt lovers. You have numerous confessions from dog owners themselves. This is the digital age, right? We have arsenal now. Confessions from dog owners themselves about how they have been attacked by their own dog or how it attacks random people. Yet they claim that every time dogs attack, that it was because of some negligence on the part of the owner. As if dogs are born harmless, right? Harmless creatures that will never become aggressive in life unless there is some evil human around who teaches it to fight or who abuses it. This is a flat out lie and they know it. I talked about the Rottweiler that was shot by cops last week after it had been attacking random people and that this same dog completed a 10 step training program, behavioral training program administered by the American Kennel Club. Some of the training involves allowing a friendly stranger to approach and speak to the handler, the owner, in a natural everyday situation, right? Sit politely for petting. The dog will allow a friendly stranger to pet it while it is out with the handler. Appearance and grooming. The dog will permit someone to check its ears, front feet, as a groomer or veterinarian would. Basically making sure this mutt don't attack random people, don't attack people who come into contact with it, or veterinarians who have to actually handle it. And we all know they attack veterinarians and random people all the time. Another step is walking through a crowd. They'll take the dog on a walk through a small crowd of pedestrians passing in close proximity to at least three people. Right? Basically trying to train the dog to not be aggressive. Why would you have to train an animal to not be aggressive if it is such a sweet loving animal? If all it wants to do is be love and love others. This Rottweiler that started attacking random people demonstrated how worthless dog training actually is. This was not training administered by some random mutt lover. This is a training program administered by the infamous Kennel Club. And it gave the dog a good citizen certificate. They actually refer to these worthless, overgrown rats as citizens after they complete this program. And this dog attacked five people and two cops. This claim that well-trained dogs don't attack is yet another lie that they project as gospel in order to protect the true nature of killers. Animals that are biologically incapable of remorse and biologically designed to be aggressive not only physically but their brain the frontal lobe 
in the human brain is the largest lobe in our brain, about 30%. Yet, it makes up only 7% of a dog's brain. When a human being suffers damage to their frontal lobe, they become more aggressive. They have less remorse. This is a precise description of dog behavior. This is why dogs are aggressive and can kill dozens of babies and not feel any remorse whatsoever. This is physiological evidence that further justifies the illegalization of dog ownership. The very structure of dog's brain testifies to how much of a safety hazard they pose to humans. Now, although cats also have a small frontal lobe, their overall brain structure is more similar to humans than our dogs. They have similar neurotransmitters as humans. People and cats have practically identical sections in the brain that control emotion. The cerebral cortex is the area of the brain responsible for thinking and rational decision making. Cats cerebral cortex are much more complex than those of dogs with almost 300 million nerve cells compared to about 160 million in the dog. Cats have better short term memory than dogs. In an experiment in which cats and dogs were tested to find out how well they could remember where food had been hidden. Cat's short-term memory lasted about 16 hours, whereas dogs only lasted about 5 minutes. These are very different brain structures. The difference in brains between cats and dogs are clearly seen in their behavior, where even dogs that are as small as cats will bark like hell and become as aggressive as any large dog at the mere sight of a human. So it has nothing to do with size. It's simply because dogs are bigger than cats, that's why they act more aggressive. No, we all know these small dogs act just as aggressive. They will charge you, lunge at you, bark at you. No different from these big dogs. And none of us are lunged at and hissed at by cats when cats see us. There's a huge difference in, in their brain. When it comes to being peaceful, there is a huge gap between dogs and cats. We have both physiological evidence and behavioral evidence that fully justifies making dogs illegal to own. That fully justifies anybody feeling discontent towards dogs. You don't even have to train cats not to be aggressive. It can be a stray cat that grew up in the street and is still not aggressive. You got physiological evidence, behavioral evidence. They attack more people each year by far than any other animal. Unprovoked, the only animals in society that leave a trail of tens of thousands of disfigured people and children each year. Why do you think dogs get shot by cops on a regular basis? Because it is a culture with dogs to attack law enforcement officers and people. We have an abundance of evidence that speaks to the natural aggression of these hazardous, worthless animals. There are at least laws for a reason. There are training programs to socialize them, to make them safe for a reason. They exterminate dogs in some other countries for a reason. There are dog control units for a reason. They'll call them animal control sometime, but yet all their equipment is for dogs. There are programs and instructions on how to survive dog attacks for a reason. Cops use dogs as weapons in the military and on the police force for a reason. Right? You have beware of dog signs for a reason. Look up beware of cat signs. They're only seen as a joke. I shit you not. Look it up for yourself. These are legalized serial killers. 
that attack people no matter how well trained they have been. By the end of this day, today, they will have attacked a hundred children or more. And they'll do the same thing tomorrow and the next day and every day. They are not the sweet loving animals that the media tries to project. They are the very opposite. Simply because your dog has never attacked anyone doesn't mean it never will. And if you have children in the home, that is child endangerment, period. The very existence of these animals in our society endangers the safety of everybody outside of your home. Because these stupid mutts escape from their owner's property all the time. The first thing they do is look for somebody to attack. A natural born, brain dead safety hazard. Environmental hazard. A walking pissing, slobbering, barking, shit-making pollutant that offers nothing of true value to humanity, that leeches and depends on the same humans they have a culture of attacking, incessant barking, harassing people, and walking around society as if they are entitled. They tell you not to blame the dog, blame the owner. But it don't matter if you blame the dog blame the owner or both. These are worthless, dependent animals themselves, and they deserve to be banned and totally removed from human civilization.